So, you want to get your hands dirty with some claymation in Blender? Let's set it up with shader nodes and a couple of other handy tricks. First, let's spare the default cube and give it a subsurface modifier with two levels of subdivision. Apply that subsurf modifier, then go into edit mode. A to select everything, press F3 and type 2 sphere. Click on that, drag your cursor to the right to make it more spherical. Shade smooth, give it a new subsurf, and here we have a sphere with good topology to try out our material on. But before we make our clay material, let's give this sphere some clay displacement. Right after our subsurface modifier, let's add a displacement modifier. Click new texture, go down to texture properties, and set the texture type to musgrave. Whoa! Go back to our displacement modifier and turn the strength down to something like 0.02. Let's go for subtlety. Now we want to be able to control the movement of this displacement. Add an empty to your scene and move it somewhere you won't lose it. Name it something important. Go back to our sphere and set the displacement modifier's coordinates to object and then make it the empty we just made. Make sure you add this modifier with the same settings to any object you want to look like clay. Check this out. If we move, rotate, or scale our object or our empty, the noise texture moves in 3D space, giving us lots of free detail when we animate. We will also use this important empty in our next step, making a clay material. Open up the shading workspace and go into the material preview mode. Now we're ready to get into the nodes. It seems like a lot at first, but it's only noise textures and color ramps, I swear. First, let's add some fingerprints to our clay. Let's do that by adding a Musgrave texture, plugged into the vector of a magic texture. Make sure you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled in your preferences, and Control shift click on our nodes so we can see what we're working with. Tweak the scale of the magic texture to around 10. And look, we kind of have fingerprints. Before we tweak anything else, add a texture coordinate node. Plug the object output into our Musgrave textures vector and set the object to, you guessed it, our very important empty. Now our fingerprints join the party, along with any other vector we plug our object output into. If your fingerprints are too big or too small, you can scale up or down the important empty. And we can change this whenever we want, so don't worry. We'll be abusing this empty later. Add a color ramp node after our magic texture, and then add a bump node. Plug our color ramp's output into the height, and plug the normal into our principled BDSF's normal. Let's control shift click our principled BDSF and change our color so we can see it better. Turn the strength and distance down on the bump node, and now we have clay that is absolutely covered in fingerprints. Let's tone it down by adding a mixed RGB node in between our color ramp and our bump node, and set its second color to white. Duplicate our color ramp and our Musgrave texture node, and again, plug our object output into its vector. Tweak our second Musgrave scale a little bit so it's not aligned with our other one, then plug it into our new color ramp. Here, let's flip the black and white handles around, and then plug the output into the factor of our new mix RGB node. And now tweaking the white handle of our color ramp changes the amounts of fingerprints we see. Nice! Next, let's add even more bumpiness. Add our third and final Musgrave texture and mix it with a noise texture using a mix RGB node. And let's preview that. Turn the Musgrave and noise textures detail down and tweak the factor of your mix texture until it looks nice and splotchy. Don't forget to plug our object output into the vector of those textures as well. Now let's add it to our fingerprint normal. Duplicate our bump node and add it between our existing one and our principled BDSF. Make sure the output of our first bump node is plugged into the vector of the second one. Plug the output of our mix shader into our new bump node's height and tweak the strength and distance. And that's looking nice. We're almost done. All we have left to do is to mess with our color and our roughness. Duplicate out two more color ramps. And remember the Musgrave texture we plugged into our magic texture? Let's plug that output into both of our color ramps. First, let's do roughness. Plug one of your color ramps into the roughness slider on your principled BDSF. That's some wet clay. Change both of the handles on your color ramp closer to white, with one handle slightly darker, to give us a not-soaked clay look. Finally, for our color, we can add in a mix RGB node and plug our last color ramp into the FAC. And plug your mix RGB's output color into your principled BDSF's color input. Pick any two colors. Ideally they're pretty close to each other, but go crazy. I'm not stopping you. And here's your clay shader. I'll have a high resolution image of the full node setup in the description. If you want to add a little more pop to your clay, add some metallic to your principal BDSF. And if you're using cycles, you can even add in some subsurface scattering. Okay, put this material on a clay shaped thing and we're ready to get into setting up our scene. In our scene viewer, set a custom frame rate and set it to 12 frames per second. This will not only save us on render times, but it will give us a choppy stop motion feel. Now we can set up our camera. Most stop motion films are made with a very long lens, so select your camera and go into its stated properties. Make your focal length something between 50 and 120 millimeters. It also helps to work at scale, so let's scale everything down including our important empty to a scale that real claymation would be. 
It doesn't have to be exact, but being close can do a lot to add realism to your render. Another side effect of filming something small with a long lens is that you have a very shallow depth of field. So while we're in our camera's data properties, let's check depth of field. Add an empty to our scene and call it focus. Place the center right where you want your camera's focus to be the most sharp. Go back to your camera settings and then for our focus object, select our empty. The only setting you have to worry about is an aperture and that is f-stop. The lower the number, the blurrier the out of focus bits will be. And that's looking great. Before I go, I have one extra tip. If you don't feel like you're getting enough clay jitteriness, click on your important empty and go to frame one on the timeline. Press I and insert a keyframe on rotation. Now go to frame two and rotate the empty around the Z axis by 45 degrees. Press enter and again, I to insert a keyframe on rotation. Select our two keyframes and press shift E and click linear extrapolation. Now press play and look at that. All that detail for free and we didn't even have to sculpt anything. This might give too noisy of a look. So if you're using this technique, maybe tone down the strength and distance on both of your bump nodes. Much better. And I couldn't talk about claymation without giving a shout out to Clado, which is a shader you can buy on BlendSwap. I'm not affiliated with the maker of this product, but it's just that good. If you've seen clay stuff made in Blender, they're probably using it. And if you're really interested in making claymation and you can spare the cash, you should really consider it. The results really do speak for themselves. Well, that just about covers everything. Get out there and make some cool claymation renders. And if you make something cool with this, tag me. Have fun.